From the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Inside Jeopardy. There he is, Johnny Gilbert on the axe in all of your ears. Not in my ear today. <laughs> uh, producer Alexa informed me before the show that uh, we've got an issue with the SD card. That's very technical. That's official. Speak. For Podcast producer speak, yeah. <laughs> we just couldn't figure out before the show how to make it happen. <laughs> so you get to hear Johnny Gill, but I don't get to hear him on his axe today, and I miss him. Well, I feel like he's here. I, I can imagine <laughs> it. I'm just bringing it all in through my imagination. Okay, welcome back to Inside Jeopardy, your exclusive and official podcast destination for all things happening in the world of Jeopardy! Exclamation mark. I'm Michael Davies. I'm joined today by producer Sarah Foss and Buzzy Cohen, exclamation mark. <laughs> Welcome back to the pod, Michael. We missed it, you. It is yeah. nice to be all together. All joking aside, I know we have a, a, a fake feud. Well, I've created a fake feud, <laughs> but it's very nice oh, really? to be back. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so I suppose I have been gone for a little bit while, yeah. especially in the room. I haven't been in the room here on the lot at Sony Pictures Entertainment. Um, I'm living heavily in <laughs> Jeopardy production time in JPT at the moment. We are just days away from starting to shoot Jeopardy Masters. The love of my life, I would say, Jeopardy Masters. <laughs> Aww, uh, at your this baby. Point, my baby. Um, so I'm very excited about that. I'm a little out of sync. I've also been in the UK where we're sort of like working on some things. Some of you might have read in the trades. We're working on a new British version of Jeopardy with the uh, magnificent Stephen Fry to host that version. And so I'm a little out of sync with J80, Jeopardy Airtime. So I'm looking forward uh, to this episode of, of traveling back in time to the JPT when we made the current J80. This is the weird world we live in here. Well, and while we were gone, while you both were gone, you both celebrated birthdays. So you both look older and wiser, might I say. Older. Ah, uh, and wiser. And <laughs> it's so cool to think that our contestants, our masters, they're in Los Angeles right now. They yeah. are about to have what we hope is, you know, the experience of a lifetime on the Alex Trebek stage. Amy Schneider, Matt Amodio, Matteo Roach, Andrew He, Sam Buttry, James Holtzauer. They're back. Yes, you can feel in the air in Los Angeles. Maybe it's why it's raining. It's a little <laughs> uh, it's a little smarter, a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more depth to the place. And uh, yeah, we're just days away. The six top-ranked players in the world. By the way, if the Super Bowl champions can be world champions, yeah. certainly true. at Jeopardy Master for now... For now, until the UK and Australian versions, the Swedish version get really gets going, we can be world we can champions. Claim it. I think these so. uh, top six Jeopardy players in the world. I'm just looking forward so much to this. And look, I wanted talking the Super Bowl. I want this to be an annual Super Bowl like event. The best and players. And why shouldn't it be? Every year, battling it out for the title of Jeopardy. Master, But right now, this past week in JAT, Jeopardy Airtime, it was all about finding who would be the champion in our high school reunion tournament mm. and a big two-day total point affair. So let's get right into the recaps. Cue the beep boops. All right, we kicked off the week with a second semifinal. We played our first one a week ago Friday. Justin Bolson going up against Stephanie Pearson and Claire Sattler. Big first round for Justin. 12 correct responses. A true daily double. He had a small lead, but Stephanie and Claire close behind. Yes, a fascinating matchup. Brown versus UNC Chapel Hill versus Yale. I love it. We've just got some amazing kids in this tournament. Justin continued to kind of seem in control in the double jeopardy round. He had 11 correct responses, but Claire took a very slim lead, just $200, bringing us to final, which... No one was able to be correct, but Justin squeaks ahead as our champion. He said in his post-game chat, I feel very, very lucky. It was a back-and-forth game. We caught up with him right after the game to see how he felt about advancing to the finals. Justin, congratulations. You are so headed much. to the finals. What's going through your mind right now? A lot of adrenaline. I'm super excited to be here. I surpassed what I did last time, which is very exciting. You had a tough game, a lot of tough material. How are you feeling heading into the finals now? I'm just gonna try to keep calm. I think that's the biggest thing I need. Just keep calm, answer what I know, um, don't answer what I don't know. When you left Jeopardy the first time, I'm sure you never imagined that you would be back, especially with our current rules, being that a teen tournament contestant couldn't appear on the syndicated show. So. What was it like to get that call? I immediately was just like flabbergasted. I didn't know what to think. My first thought was like, okay, so when should I start studying? But I was, I was really floored. I was shocked and excited. And what's been the best part of being reunited with so many of your 
fellow teen tournament contestants from your tournament and from our other Season 35 tournament. So I get to talk to a lot of people from the first teen tournament, but it's really exciting to see them in person. They're all like so sweet and so nice, and I'm really glad to like finally meet them in person and talk to them. A few people like, like Tim Joe, um, Caleb, seeing them in person, it's like, wow, they're real. Like they're real people. <laughs> They're real people, and you could be facing one of them in the final. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy your downtime. Big two games coming up for you. Congratulations on making it to the finals. Thank you so much. All right. We kick off our third semifinal game on Tuesday with Caleb Richman, Maya Wright, and Tim Joe. Really fun contestant intros in this game. All three players did a little fun pop and lock, pointing to the next player. Maya played right along. Interestingly enough, Caleb did find the first daily double, and he actually did a Sam Buttry shout out. So yes. he's ready for one of these masters. He said to paraphrase the infamous Sam Buttry, I would like to wager all of the dollars I'm legally allowed to. <laughs> the Jeopardy round was really Tim's round. 14 correct responses, none incorrect, and more than double what Maya and Caleb had as they entered into the double Jeopardy round. And heading into final, Maya was the only one to come up with the correct response. She says, what book makes a lot of lists and who's famous? She just started thinking about it. And of course, she got to the thesaurus. A reminder on that clue, names in the bookstore. This man made lists, perhaps to cope with depression. A set of lists he published in 1852 made his name synonymous with a type of book. So Maya becomes the only person in our high school reunion tournament to make it to the finals both times. Here's Maya with her reaction right after advancing to the finals. Maya, you are headed to the finals. How does it feel? I'm just, I, I honestly can't believe it. I'm excited. I'm really happy to be doing this again. And, you know, I, they did not make it easy. My competitors were so good and I'm just grateful for the opportunity. In the finals, you'll be the only one who's been in that position before, a two-time finalist here on the Alex Trebek stage. How does that feel? It feels great. I mean, I, um, I'm happy to do it again, and I just want to do my best. I'm excited to be in this position one more time. And again, with my friends, you know, just competing together, I couldn't be more grateful. What was it like when you first got the call that you were in fact coming back, that you hadn't seen your last days as a contestant on Jeopardy? I, I was actually coming out of class and I had gotten the email while I was in there, but I couldn't check my phone. And um, Claire Sattler actually <laughs> called me and like right as I was walking out of the building and she said, Maya, check your email, check your email. And I was like, okay, gosh, I'm trying to. And then at that point I saw it and I was trying not to freak out on the quad, which is full of people and I couldn't tell anyone. It was, it was so hard. Like I had to get back to my apartment and then I made sure the apartment was empty and I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, I get to do it again. I get to do it again. And we all called each other um, like later that night and later that week just to basically freak out over the phone. You definitely have a lot of support here. Uh, your mom was sitting behind me when you were declared the winner. I don't know who was more excited, her or you or your fellow teen tournament alumni. How does it feel to have that much support heading into the finals? I just love it. I mean, my family and my friends, uh, my teachers and everyone like back home and everyone here too, I, I appreciate it so much. Well, good luck in the finals, Maya. You're familiar with those top three spots. We wish you the best of luck and congratulations on this win. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we kicked off Buzzy's favorite two-day total point affair on Wednesday. It's the finals. Jackson Jones, Maya Wright, and Justin Bolson. Right off the bat, apologies to the entire audience. We totally blew it at the top of the show. We made a horrible error where we revealed the final scores at the end in the opening cutaway shot during Mayim's monologue. It's a series of errors that it's, it's somehow remarkable that they all happened, starting with the you know, decision to pick up the monologue, which was probably the right decision. Although Sarah, neither Sarah and I can remember exactly what was wrong with the monologue, why we picked it up. We but can't. Sometimes and we're we, probably second I know, guessing but sometimes ourselves. We, um, <laughs> but we do occasionally pick up monologues for some reason. Sometimes there's a fact that's incorrect. Sometimes there's just a performance issue. So we pick it up at the end of the show. There is a cutaway shot during there. Of course, it should be standard procedure. And it is supposed to be standard procedure that we take the uh, scores in the podiums back to the original level, but it didn't happen. This was then not caught in post and it was not caught in the final 
QC. There are so many elements that should check this. We have now put in place a new series of protocols that will prevent this from happening again. But this is one of these things I got to tell you, and I'm sure in all of your jobs, I'm sure if you're honest with yourselves, there are mistakes made in every single one of your businesses. My whole thing is to always focus not on what happened and why did this happen in order to punish people. It's what happened and why did it happen so that we can build a protocol to make sure it never happens again. And so we live and learn and we apologize for anybody whose experience of this program uh, was ruined. We take these mistakes to heart so hard. The self-flagellation that happens across the senior management team and the post team and everybody involves, that's a good thing about Jeopardy. We take mistakes really, really seriously. Uh, What we're trying to do is be more transparent when we make them and to speak in places on our social media and on this podcast about how we made the mistake and to assure you that we are doing everything to stop making in the future. I think one thing I'd also say is that every part of the Jeopardy process, and this is a good thing for Jeopardy as we grow, as we do masters, as we take on these tournaments, as we you know, have done Celebrity this year, as we're doing all these new versions, there is some pressure on this production. We're making more episodes. People are working more hours. And so that does lead to mistakes, but still no excuse for this. This was too basic. We're going to do everything we can to make sure this doesn't happen again. Better days ahead. Uh, Interestingly enough, there was a Reddit poll before the finals. Our fans were asked to vote for who they thought would win. So out of 671 votes, 348 for Jackson, 181 for Maya. Justin, spoiler alert, we know he ends up winning it all. Just 142 votes. Yeah, and, you know, looking at the semis, Justin, a come-from-behind win in the semis when they all got final wrong, but he just had a, a better wager. Maya moving in not from the lead to make it into the finals. Jackson was really the most dominant player of these three. I'd also like to point out that we have two Georgians in the final, which is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, Into the gameplay, Justin, an incredibly hot Jeopardy round, finishing the Jeopardy round with $9,000. Double Jeopardy extends that lead, although, you know, Jackson really picked it up and finishes just $4,000 behind him. Maya with just $4,400 at the end of the Double Jeopardy round. As we know, a two-day total point affair, you know, finishing Double Jeopardy with $4,400, double that up if you can in final, and uh, you're still in the game. Well, and thanks to that big $10,000 wager and being the only one who was correct, Jackson goes into day two with a pretty impressive total. But like you said, it's a two-game total point affair. Anything can happen. We head into Thursday where anything does, closing out our tournament with Jackson, Maya, and Justin. Jeopardy round, slow start for all three players. No one scores over $4,000, but Jackson did run that can we discuss. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes when you're playing this back-to-back final, you're starting out that second Jeopardy round, you're kind of thinking about the last final Jeopardy. You're, you know, kind of in your head a little bit. So not surprised that it took a second to kick the tires and get things going. But man, did they get things going in that double Jeopardy round. Jackson finishing with just 5,600. But as we say, he's carrying over that score. So that's still a meaningful amount. Um, And Maya and Justin with 14,000 and 11,000 respectively. Very tight game when you take in this two-day total point affair as we know all three get final correct and it came down to the wagering justin coming out ahead i have to ask michael davies i know you're a little mm, i don't want to say dismissive of a two-day total point affair but you're suspicious of a two-day total point affair uh i would just say for me it is not the best way to determine who the best player out of three players is I think one game is too little. I think a two-day total point affair is capricious. Uh, well, a little capricious, <laughs> and a you know it's why we've introduced in TOC a you know a first of three games you know best of seven series. Um, but I think for a tournament like this, I think the two-day is fantastic. We are doing it again in Jeopardy Masters. That's Ooh. a uh, very big thing. In the the final hour of Masters will be a two-game yes total wow. point affair. So it will all happen within one episode. I was, was I refreshed or was I invigorated or was I reinvigorated? Um, I was perhaps pleasantly surprised to see that this was a a two-game total point affair where the person in second place 
at the end of the first game came back and won the second game and won the overall so it was it was good to see well i love the reaction standing ovation from all of the fellow contestants who were in the audience in their red jeopardy sweatshirts you could feel the love and support for this group and the chance for them to get to come home and maya said hey she's happy for justin because he's bringing the title back to georgia so a win is had let's check in with our high school reunion tournament champion justin bolson justin bolson you did it you are the champion in the high school reunion tournament. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What is this moment like? Um, it feels really good. It feels like all the quiz bowl stuff I've done, all the coaching I had, I had really great middle school and high school quiz bowl coaches. And I feel like I owe a lot of this to them. So I'm owing them a big thanks right now. Well, you were one of the youngest competitors when we did this a few years back. You are still one of our youngest competitors. You're 18 years old. How do you attribute all the knowledge that you have collected in just 18 <laughs> short years? My dad's a pretty big part of that. He still makes me read the news, so I still have to keep up with things that are happening. Um, but yeah, like I go to Brown, which is a really open, collaborative environment. So I had a lot of friends that helped me study too. Now you mentioned that your dad was going to be very upset if you won this whole <laughs> thing and he wasn't here to see it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a watch party with dad too, right? Yes. So. Dad was always the one like cheering for me at quiz bowl competitions, but he always put me under so much pressure because he was such a supportive force that I kind of like was like, oh gosh, I got to do this for dad. So I was like, hey dad, if you're not here, it's okay. <laughs> and he, he called me like a, a week ago or so and he was like, hey, I just want to say, you better not have won this thing because I'll be really mad. And I'm like, I, so now I'm here like, uh oh. <laughs> Well, looking ahead now, there is this, I don't know, another chance to come back in the Tournament of Champions. Last Tournament of Champions, Matea Roach was 23, and she was our youngest competitor. You're only 18, but how do you think you're going to stand up with the uh, maybe more senior contestants? <sighs> Those guys are crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think everybody knows that um, those guys who've gone on mega streaks, um, they're, they're really, really good. So... I can only hope to do my best against them, but uh, we'll see what they have in store for me. <laughs> and what has been the best part of this experience? Best part is seeing everybody. I love you guys so much. It's been so nice to see you all again. Um, they're all so supportive, so smart, so sweet. And I hope that our connections will last far into the future. Well, I'd say you're a pretty great representative of season 35 teen tournament contestants. Congratulations on an incredible win, and we'll see you in the Tournament of Champions. Thank you so much. All right, and that wraps it up. The first ever high school reunion tournament. Congratulations again to Justin Bolson. We're looking forward to watching him compete in the Tournament of Champions, where he will actually become the first contestant to play with Alex, Mayim, and Ken as their host. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. I think there were a lot of comments about whether or not, what is this, you know, high school reunion competition? Like, why are we, why, why are we doing it? You know, this was sort of a placeholder, and it was a placeholder because I wanted to do the Jeopardy National College Championship again, which we did so successfully, but the network, ABC, weren't ready to tell us yet whether they would put it on the air. In the end, they decided to go with Celebrity and with Masters instead of with JNCC. And so we were left sort of stranded, not knowing when that decision was going to be made. We had to green light something that would be in place. The point was made to me by some of the influential voices on staff that we had all these amazing teen players who were now of college age, who we didn't have to go out and build a new uh, casting situation for that we could sort of bring in house and it could sort of keep that sort of college theme going. I think now where I net out is for me, and I'm not sure you've heard this, Buzzy, but Jeopardy is a sport and that's kind of <laughs> how I'm trying to run it. You're blowing but, my mind right now. Mike. But I'm really part of running a sport is being in player development. And one thing that's really important for Jeopardy to do is develop our players at teen level, at high school level. Quite deliberately, we call this a high school reunion, not a teen reunion, because we believe that Jeopardy, which is essentially educational, is about high school and college. And we need to build real program with Jeopardy in high schools and in college. And we need to have competitions which develop those players on the television on the national level. So I think where we're going is in future years, we will uh, flip-flop high school and college and do one one year, one the next year, 
and you know potentially do that instead of in February of each year, do that potentially in May of each year. Mm. Uh, so it offers an alternative to Masters as that's going on, hopefully on an annual basis <laughs> moving forward. I do like the idea of the Jeopardy quarter quell. These you know high schoolers think they've kind of <laughs> lived their Jeopardy thing, and then President Snow, aka Michael Davies, makes them come back and fight again for their spot in the TOC. Well, I'll go a step further. <laughs> I'll go a step further. Sarah knows what I'm going to say. I feel pretty strongly that people who've played on college before and people who've played in sort of teen tournaments before, you know, they're playing Jeopardy at a time in their life when they've not yet reached their maximum potential as Jeopardy competitors, as Jeopardy players. And, you know, we are having deep conversations within the inner sanctum of Jeopardy (laughs) right now about the eligibility of players and whether or not we should you know frankly have any restrictions on Mm -hmm. eligibility I want very clearly in this sport I want the very best players playing Jeopardy on the Alex Trebek stage that's what I want and to some extent I don't care whether you've played before I don't care whether you have taken the test before I just want the best players on that stage and I think that we've had a different feel it's been a game show in the past where we've dealt with eligibility and access and I just view this as a sport I don't know that we'd be banning anybody from you know trying to play in the US Open tennis or the US Open golf like I want Jeopardy to be an open competition right and that everybody all comers can come in and play all right except for you buzzy i'm retired you're too inside you're too You're too inside inside. well you got a little sneak peek into michael davies mind it always gives me joy and fear at the same time and now we are (laughs) heading into friday returning to regular jeopardy ken jennings back as host and we're also welcoming back three-day champion stephen webb going up against Jeanette Peterson and Nick Lauber. Steven had a few weeks off, but he did not collect any dust, came right out in the Jeopardy round with a big, big lead in spite of not getting that daily double, which Jeanette got and converted. And that lead just extended in the double Jeopardy round. Yeah, Steven now has three out of his four games with a runaway in the column. So obviously a lot of people were anxious to have him return, and he did not disappoint. All three players incorrect in Final Jeopardy, but it didn't matter. Steven had already sealed his victory. I got to respect Steven in the postgame chat. Ken asked what the secret to his buzzer timing was, and Steven said, I have no idea. Because, (laughs) I mean, anyone who says they really have figured out the buzzer after just four games on Jeopardy, uh, they're selling you something. Yeah, he said when he actually (laughs) stopped focusing on the lights and the enabling, that that actually helped him. So There you go. There you go. Well, that concludes our game recaps. Interestingly enough, Justin and Steven have both now been added to the TOC tracker. And this is the first time two people have reached the tracker in one week since Christine Welchel and Margaret Shelton did last year right around this time. So lots of good things ahead. The tracker is building, and now it's time for viewer questions. Sydney asks, during the high school reunion tournament, I have been noticing more often than not that players at the end podium on the right, as well as even the middle podium, were the first picker of the game during the tournament, rather than the player at the champion's podium. Is that by chance, or how does the process work? By the way, the high school reunion tournament was great, and I hope you guys make future teen tournaments in the years to come. We've already addressed that. Mm. Oh, Sydney will be happy with your response, Michael. For this high school reunion tournament, basically, we did put them in podium order, oftentimes based on, you know, who came in with the highest score from their semifinal and those types of things. But in every game, it was a random draw for who would select first. Because, again, you never know. You could be the first person to select that daily double. We didn't want to give the advantage all the way through. So that was a random draw. And I guess this time it just ended up often being people on the right or in the middle. Now, Michael asks, love the pod from over the other side of the pond. I just want to make clear this isn't me Michael <laughs> I know I was Michael, reading as I'm reading uh, I'm asking the question <laughs> in light of last week's news about Jeopardy UK returning and I've already applied since apps opened this morning have there been any conversations about any sort of international tournament well I mean yes the most informal conversations have happened you know in recent weeks I don't think I told you this Sarah I had a wonderful conversation with this lovely Swedish gentleman, Pontus Andersson, who produces the Swedish version of Jeopardy that's gone on the air and been very successful. I've spoken to the German producers of the new German version of Jeopardy uh, that sort of played as part of a wheel, but ho- very hopeful that we'll get a new series of, of, of Jeopardy on in Germany. 
And uh, we're going to be making the show in the UK and stay tuned. Perhaps another couple of major territories we're looking at, at doing the show. And with the producer of the UK version, we had a wonderful conversation about where that could lead us in the future. I'm a big fan, big golf fan, big fan of the Ryder Cup. Mm. You know, historically, you know, Great Britain and Ireland against the United States. Then it became Europe versus the United States. It's the only time that anyone in Britain has ever waved a European flag, <laughs> um, except during the Brexit vote. And so I absolutely could see a UK versus US jeopardy in the future would be amazing. We could do it on July 4th. We could make the UK team wear red coats. We could like <laughs> theme it somehow. I think it would just be absolutely amazing. There was an international tournament yeah. once before your days or my days, but those who were here for it say it was so much fun. So I'd love to see it come back. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that's it for today's show. We'll be back next week to discuss more gameplay as Stephen Webb goes for that all-important fifth win. Oh, yes. And will he become the ninth official qualifier for the TOC? You're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, can't wait. As always, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Rate us, leave us a comment, share across social Follow us at Jeopardy on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on TikTok. And certainly stay tuned because we are going to be doing a live show, looks very likely, in New York on March 30th. Stay tuned to all of our social for ticket announcements about that. And send us your questions to Inside Jeopardy Podcast at gmail.com. See you next week. Bye. nine-letter word describes what you should do to watch more great Jeopardy content. What is subscribe? Correct. Still got it. <laughs>